Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Uh, today's video, it's a video that I did for myself, so I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I want to be much more on top of 2023 releases. So I made a list of all the horror, fantasy and thriller books that are coming out between January and May-ish. Uh, that seem interesting or that their covers caught my eye, their titles, the authors. So, you know, I want to be more organized in, <laughs> in 2023. So I made that and the list was extremely long. So I'm obviously not going to talk about all the books. If you want to check all the 2023 releases that I'm excited about, and that I might check out at some point, but I don't necessarily mention all of them in this in this video. You can check out the description. I will put the link to my list on Goodreads, so you can check it out. As you may know by now, if you have seen uh, most of my like, if you have seen my videos in my channel, if you're a new viewer, you're gonna dis uh, discover it now. I'm into horror books. Uh, I discovered this thing about myself in 2022. I think I always tried to tell myself that I was a certain reader, that I liked certain topics and that I didn't like others, but at some point I realized, who am I kidding, I'm reading for myself, so if I want to read 100 books that are solely horror books, I'm gonna do that. So in 2022 I read a lot of books, more than half of my reading in 2022 were horror books or thrillers, uh, so that's pretty cool. I didn't read a lot of fantasy, even though I'm a very fantasy person, so I'm gonna try to get more into that in 2023. Uh, so yeah, most of the books in this list are horror books, so if that's not your cup of tea, I'm sorry, but this is not the video for you. But if you want to discover horror in 2023, stay here and watch the video. There's gonna be some mention of fantasy, as I said, some thrillers, and that's it. That's basically it. But in my list, my Goodreads list, uh, you have romance, you have YA, you have non-fiction, you have fiction. So, you know, there's books for everyone in that list. I organized the video by month uh, because I realized that most of the books were the same genre. So I was like, I'm not going to do it by genre. So it's going to be from January to May. Uh, as you can, you're going to see January has a lot of books. And then as we get further in the months of 2023, there's less and less books. There's fewer books. Um, and then I put like three or four books for summer of 2023 because there's not a lot of releases as of now announced, but I'm sure there will be. So, you know, uh, voila, voila, voila. So let's get started. And so for January, eight books in January, I will put the cover of the book and the date it gets released here. So the first book that I'm super hyped about and I'm sad to say that I think the paperback version will not be available at the same time as the hardback, but I'm gonna check. Oh, nice. The paperback version will be available on the same date at a high price, but whatever, it's a price I'm willing to pay. The first book that I'm very excited about for 2023 is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. It comes on January 10th, so I'm super excited because that's like in a month. Uh, this book is a dark academia fantasy thriller. It's not fun. Well, yeah, it's fantasy. Dark academia fantasy thriller mystery spooky all at once. And I freaking love the first book. I have it there, but I'm too lazy to stand up and show you. Uh, the first book was a. Uh, I did not know Lee Bardugo until last year. Uh, when I started reading Shadow and Bone, the, the Shadow and Bone series, and then Nine, Ninth, ha Ninth House. And I have to say, Ninth House is so much well written than Shadow and Bone, and you can tell that Lee Bardugo was like more of a writer. Like, she managed to improve her writing as she was writing, writing Shadow and Bone. So, Ninth House is like the refined version of uh, the writing of Lee Bardugo, so that's excellent. Uh, and I have to read a summary because I do remember the overall story of Ninth House, but I do not remember how it ends, uh, or I'll either we read it or, you know, we'll see. But basically it's a story about Alex Stern. Uh, she survives a multiple murder-like situation, and while she's in the hospital, she gets contacted, like, she she's, like, approached by these Yale uh, guys, and they go, like, hey, you want to be a Yale student? And she's like, but why me? 
And they're like, no, but you'll see, like, it's all good. Like, we're offering you a place. And she's like, okay, well, you know, why not? Because her life was very miserable until then. So she accepts. And as she arrives at the university, she discovers that she was on, she's only there to investigate, like, the secret societies of Yale. Mm, just thinking about it. Uh, and so, yeah, the book, like, starts like this. And, like, it's, like, very good. And there's a lot of, like, much, like, there's a lot of mystery vibes. And there's a lot of dark academia vibes. So I really, really enjoyed it. And so Hellbent is the second book of this series. I don't know if there will be more, but, you know, sometimes less is more, so you know. Anyway, so that's the first book I'm very excited about. The second book is a fantasy book, comes out the same day. It's called The Daughters of It's the Har by Hadir Elsby. I'm botching those names, I'm really sorry. I made a small resume of all the books so that you get kind of like the reader's digest of what the book is about because some of these descriptions were horribly long. So I'm gonna read them to you because I don't know, I am not an actress, I am not made to remember scripts. So I have my computer here and I'm gonna read them to you. So, The Daughters of Idzihar. It's a fantasy inspired by modern Egyptian history about two young women. One is called Nahal and she's a spoiled aristocrat who wants to go to an academy and like, you know, be like the it girl, but suddenly her family is in debt and so they can afford her, like, they can afford for her to go to this academy and so they force her to marry this guy called Nico. But Nico is not only in love with Nahal, he is in love with our second protagonist, Georgina. <laughs> Sorry for the accent. A bookshop worker. Georgina is the opposite of Nahal, she's poor, she finds solace and she finds solace in working with the daughters of Itzihar name of the book, a radical women's rights group that fights to attain recognition for women to have a say in their own lives. Nehal and Georgina live very different lives until then, but through Nico they find each other and they will realize that they have actually a lot more in common than they think and that one thing they have in common is one, they're for women's rights, because we all should be for women's rights, they want to fight for them and they're both magical beings. So good, so so good. I am really excited and again, I haven't checked if the book has been The Daughters of Itzihar. Is the brush, like the paperback version out on the same day? It's out two days later. However, I have to say the cover of the paperback version is horrible. Oh, Jesus. I'll, I'll put both here, but there's a 20 year difference between the paperback and the hardback, so it will be the the paperback one. So yeah, uh, so that's gonna be a duology. That's the first book of the duology. All right, super excited. It's fantasy and apparently there's gonna be some LGBT content too, so <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyway, next one is The Things We Do To Our Friends by Heather Darwin. It's a mystery book. And uh, oof, this one. When I read the description of this one, I was like, ba, 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 ba. All right, so again, I'm gonna read because, you know, and if I was a professional, I would have my, my computer behind the camera, but I do not like filming with my glasses, so I, could, I wouldn't be able to see. So, Claire moves to Edinburgh to start university. And, and then there she meets Tabitha, a rich, fabulous girl from her art history class, and they soon become friends. And Claire gets to know everyone in the group of friends with Tabitha and they're all like rich kids and they all do like crazy like rich kid things. And then one day Tabitha reveals a secret project to Claire and Claire is like shook. She's like, what the heck? And you know, she gets drawn into this project and once she realizes how effed up this whole thing is, it's like way too late and now she's trapped and she's like, ah! So, it's a mystery. So I'm thinking there's gonna be some weird shit that these rich kids are doing. And I'm very excited about it because it feels like a mix of like a horror movie with like mystery and like, I don't know, I'm really hyped about this one. It feels like a very nice cozy mystery, like not cozy mystery, but like mystery that I would read like on a Sunday afternoon. So I'm very happy about it. Anyway, so that's the third book. The next one. It's a book by an author that I really like, but I, this year I read more books by him that were before the books that I like. And so I'm excited about it, but I'm also cautious now. And it's How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Uh, it comes out on January 17th. 
Uh, and so I really enjoyed the final girl support group, uh, the Southern Club Guide to Slay, you know, the vampire one with the peaches. Um, and the other one, the My Best Friend's Exorcism, I absolutely love that one. And this, be like, this to me, this book, I Have to Sell a Haunted House, is like the second phase of the Grady Hendrix, uh, un like, uh, cinematic universe, because the first phase, I really hate all those books. I read Horror Story, was like, eh. I read uh, Satan Loves You, eh. I want to read With All Our Souls, because apparently it's very good too, but I'm very scared because it's in the first phase. And now, I feel like we're entering, like, the vampire one, Best Friends Exorcism and Final Girl Support Group, it's like the second phase and I feel like How to Sell a Haunted House is gonna start the the third phase of the Grady Hendrix Cinematic Universe and I'm both scared and excited because if it mixes both components of phase one and phase two, I hope that makes sense for everyone listening, like watching this video, but this is all just like my analysis. Anyway, so How to Sell a Haunted House, it's basically two, two brothers, like two siblings, I have Louise and Mark, uh, they die, the parents die, and Louise and Mark, they're like, okay, so what do we do now? Because they don't really get along, but they have the family house and they have money problems, so they're like, we're gonna sell the family house. But as they go to the house, they realize that before their parents died, they covered the mirrors with like blankets, they like, they shut down the door to the basement and they're like, hmm, suspicious. Honestly, if this happened to me, I think I would call like, uh, I don't know, Ghostbusters or someone, because I'd be like, this is not normal, like, <laughs> my parents had issues. So they decide to sell a house, but then they realize that the house is haunted, and as the book of the, the name of the book says, how to sell a haunted house, I guess we're gonna see that fact. So I think there's gonna be some horror components, but I think there's gonna be some comedy components, and that is why I'm saying it is phase three, because the first phase was very more, like, into comedic, like, comedy mixed with horror. The second one was horror, pure horror-ish. And then this one, I feel it's gonna be more horror, but with small comedy. So, we'll see. Anyway, if you're still here, and I have not lost you with my rambling of Grady Hendrix, that's my first book for January. I'm gonna speed it up because there's a lot of books and I'm seeing, I'm at 60 minutes, so that scares me. All right, next one, it's What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. It's a thriller. So, you know, and I'm gonna read you. This one I didn't make a resume because the description was fairly short, so I'm gonna read it to you. <laughs> Naomi Shaw used to believe in magic. 22 years ago, she and her two besties, Cassidy and Olivia, spent the summer roaming the woods, imagining a world of ceremony and wonder. They called it the goddess game. This seems like cool. This, this, things like, this feels like something I would do with my friends. The summer ended suddenly when Naomi was attacked. Miraculously, she survived her 17 stab wounds and lived to identify the man who had hurt her. That's cool. Good. Yes, queen. The girl's testimony put away a serial killer wanted for murdering six women. They were heroes. <gasps> and they were liars. Ooh, yes. For decades, the friends have kept a secret worth killing for. But now Olivia wants to tell and Naomi sets out to find out what really happened in the woods, no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. So cool. This feels like a book I'm gonna devour in like one go. This feels like Pretty Little Liars mixed with like magic. Oh my God, so good, so, so good. All right, episode 13 is the one that is like, I'm very excited about this one for one specific reason and is that it reminds me a bit of, um, Ghost Adventures. So, it's a book about a TV crew, a ghost hunting TV crew, that gets access to an abandoned haunted house and they go like, oh my god, this is gonna be like the best episode of the season. So they go like, okay, this is gonna be the last season, the last episode, so it's gonna be the episode 13th of the season. And as they go to the house, they realize that something is like, eh, off with the house. And uh, the house begins to do weird shit and it's like, I think it's gonna be like the classic haunted house book But with the whole like it's a TV show component. So I think it's gonna be fucking good That is another book that I want to read uh, And I'm very excited about then there is all hollows by Christopher Golden and this one I'm excited because I love books that are like small town mysteries and horror stuff but I have to say the description of the book, I was a bit like, 
less excited. I don't know, it's weird to say, but like I'm excited, but also like the description unmotivated me. It's 1994, Massachusetts, and it's Halloween night. Four kids are trick-or-treating mixed with the local kids and they seem terrified and they beg the neighborhood kids to hide them away to keep them safe from the cunning men. However, the families of the local kids are falling apart and no kid is safe. So who will help them and who is the cunning man? It's a very standard description of a book. It doesn't really call to me, but the whole like there's kids from outside of town who arrive in town and they mess people and they go like please help us like the cunning man is coming that's like a good setting for me so i'm willing to give this a try and and yeah like you know like i'm, I'm i just want <laughs> i just want to read it this is probably going to be a book, that I, a book that i get at the library uh unless well i just checked the paperback version comes on 20th of june so this is gonna be a library book, but the cover of the paperback version is so much better than the like the hardback. Stunning, stunning. And so the last one for January is a cozy mystery, uh, and it's a series that I started this year thanks to a challenge that I did. I did a uh, reading the first books that show up on TikTok or something like that, and I read Finley, Fen Finley Donovan is uh, not okay. I think that was the name of the first book. Uh, and it's a story about a woman who suddenly finds herself in like a um, murder for hire situation and she's like, but I am not that type of person, but you know, she's like struggling with money and her nanny, she goes like, well, let's do it because we both need the money. And so they get into this like weird scheme. It was very funny. I loved the bantering between both characters. I loved the nanny character. I need to read the second book because Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun is the third book of the series. So hopefully I can read both before uh, the end or maybe I'll buy a pack. Like if they do like one of those boxes with the three books. Anyway, I'm really excited. It's the third installment. I don't want to read what it's about because I will probably get spoiled, spoiled about what happens in the second one. But the first one was very refreshing and you know, I sometimes you need some things are not like just spooky content and that really chill you. Uh, so that's for January. And I'm gonna have some coffee because again, I'm drying out here. All right, um, February, 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 February. I have four books in February. Um, I have Sister, Maiden and Monster by Lucy A. Snyder. Sister, Monster, wait, but <laughs> Sister Maiden a Monster comes out end of February. It's a horror book and it's basically a story about like a world where like there's a virus. I feel like we're gonna see a lot of this because it's not the first one that you know talks about viruses and like things like this, but basically it is um, post world after like a virus that really changes people and makes them like very monstrous. Uh, and it focuses on like three women and like the consequences of like all of this happening to the earth and so basically every woman has like a weird thing going on with her a weird slash monstrous thing going on with them so Erin she was very quiet and closeted and now she has an appetite for women and her brain she has an appetite for a specific woman and her brain and she's like mm -hmm, why does the forbidden fruit taste so good and while this feels like, okay, she's gonna be, you know, lesbian, maybe there's also like some cannibalistic component. I don't know. I think it's gonna be both. I think it's gonna be a very like violent book. So I'm all for that. Savannah, she's a BDSM, a professional BDSM switch and she discovers a new turn on, commuting brutal murders for her, for her Aldrich masters. So that's pretty fun. And then Mariva, who's plagued by chronic, she's plagued with chronic tumors. She's too horrified to acknowledge her divine role in the coming apocalypse. And as her growths multiply, so too does her desperation. So honestly, this feels like a very messy book. Like when I read the description, I was like, this is a mess. But at the same time, this feels like a book that could be like a certain hunger to me. Like it's so brutal and like so out there that I actually enjoyed it. But it feels like if it's done well. Like, you know, I don't like horror and gory content for no purpose. And so, yeah, I'm excited about this book. Uh, it feels like it's going to be either a blast or I'm going to hate it. All right. Now, the next one is called Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna. And it's a horror book. 
and I'm gonna read you the description because it was very short. The town of Bishop is known for exactly two things, recurring windstorms and an endless field of sunflowers that stretches farther than the eye can see. And women, missing women. So when three more women disappear on one stormy night, no one in Bishop is surprised, which is like, who would want to be there? Who would want to live in a town where like they're known to have missing women? Maybe men, but uh, you know. The case is closed and their daughters are left in their dusty shared house with the shattered pieces of their lives. Until the wind kicks up a terrible secret at their mother's much delayed memorial. With secrets come the lies each of the girls is forced to confront. After caring for the other girls, Delilah would like to move on with her bo boyfriend Bennett, but she can bear his touch. Whitney has already lost both her mother and her girlfriend, Eleanor, and now her only solace is an old weather vane, weather vane that seems to whisper to her. Jude, Whitney's twin sister, would rather ignore it all, but the winds kicks up her secret too, the summer fling she had with Delilah's boyfriend. And more than anything, Bo wants answers and she wants them now. Something happened to their mothers and the townsfolk know what it was. She's sure of it. Bishop has always been a strange town, but what the girls don't know is that Bishop was founded on blood and now it craves theirs. Gossip Girl mixed with like mystery town. I'm like, yes, freaking queen. I'm so pumped about this book. Um, you have no idea. Like when I saw this description, it fit like it checked uh, all the boxes, all the boxes where darkness blooms and oh yes, this was the cover. <gasps> I just remember this was the book with the most beautiful, oh, this freaking book has such a beautiful cover. It is so freaking beautiful. If you have been in this channel. You know, I book, I love books with like flowers and like people on the cover and automatically they become five out of fives for me. So, oh, oh my God, oh my God. It's a bit, it's only on, on hardback though. So that's a bit triggering to me, but uh, I'll see. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Oh my God, oh my God. All right, A Day of Fallen Night is the next one and it is the uh, prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Uh, if you have not read The Priory of the Orange Tree, obviously, I think this is going to be uh, not a book that you should read. I don't know if they're like prequels in the sense that like you're going to understand everything that happens in the original book or not. Hope, like it technically should be like that, but you know, I, you know. Anyway, uh, I absolutely love reading The Priory of the Orange Tree. I started rereading it uh, not that long ago and I stopped. But I stopped because I realized that this book was coming out February 28th. So I think what I'm going to do is read the Priory of the Orange Tree and then the sequ like the prequel. I, I would tell you to just like check out the Priory of the Orange Tree and then check this out. Both books are stunning and I'm just so happy to have them. Anyway, so that's fantasy for you guys. Uh, I really recommend reading the Priory of the Orange Tree. It's like such a high fantasy, well-written novel. Uh, it just you need to do it like in a chill way. You cannot read the book in like I'm gonna read this It's like a thousand pages. So take it easy All right, the next one is a YA horror book and it's called she is haunting by Tran 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 Probably just that's not the pronunciation, but you know, it's a story about Jade Nugent who goes to visit her strange father in Vietnam and she has to stay there for five weeks and she has to be like, you know, the best daughter ever because basically her dad promised that he would give her money to go to college if she did so. And so she's like, I must be on my best behavior. But as she steps into the house of, you know, her father, she realizes that the house is a bit weird, that there's like weird vibes coming from the house and that there's ghosts and the ghosts are telling them, like telling her like, do not eat, don't do, do, not eat, don't do this and all of this. And she's like, hmm, this is very weird. Like, why is this house against me and my family? And she's will start this journey to destroy the house because the house is destroying the family. So, you know, feels like a good YA horror, like very comforting YA horror book. So I'm excited about it. Also, the cover is so beautiful, so beautiful. All right, we're moving on to March, 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 March. So the first book of March is uh, written by an author that I've been meaning to check for a long time. 
Uh, it's Oji's stage. Uh, she wrote Baby Teeth, which was nominated and like... It's a horror book and apparently it's very good, so I want to check it out. I'm gonna click one to read now. And she's reading another one that's called Mother. Uh, I think it's gonna be similar, like she, I think she has her own niche of genre and that is like horror books with mothers. And so basically it's a story about a woman who's like having financial trouble and suddenly her mom uh, becomes a widow and she's like, the mom is like, can I go live with you? And she's like, well, okay, sure, but like you need to help me financially. And then there's lockdown, so they're trapped together in the house. And living with mother isn't for everyone, good intentions turn bad. Soon after Jackie, the mom, moves in and old wounds fester, new ones open. Grace, the daughter, starts having nightmares about her disabled twin sister who died when they were kids. And Jackie discovers that Grace secretly catfishes people online, a hobby that Jackie thinks is unforgivable. When Jackie makes an earth-shattering accusation against her daughter, Grace sees it as an act of revenge and it sends her spiraling into a sleep-deprived madness. As the walls close in, the ghosts of Grace's past collide with a new but familiar threat. Mom. This is also something... I, 2022 was a book, a year to discover things that I like. I discovered that I hate books that have points of views and chapters told by cats and pets and similar animals. I discovered that I love books about small towns and hockey and hockey play like teams. I, I discovered that I love books about storylines, about crazy moms, crazy daughters and pregnancy and all of these things and this book fits all <laughs> of that and I'm really excited about it. And since this seems to be the niche of Zoja Soji stage, I think I'm going to check all of her other books but uh, I'm really excited about this one. Second book of March, it's The Adventures of Amina Al-Sirafi and this one I'm only putting it here because I realized that I've never read any fantasy with pirates and this is a fantasy with pirates and sorcerers and I was like, say no more. I want to try this genre, I want to see what the fuss is about. So I added and a lot of people are talking about it, so you know, and I think this is the author of The City of Brass, which I have not read, but it has a lot, it has received a lot of praise, so you know. Uh, I'm gonna read you the description. Amina Al-Sirafi should be content. After a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates, she survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful men merchant princes, princes, sorry, several husbands and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood and, not motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. But when she's tracked down by the obscenely wealthy mother of a former crewman, she's offered a job no bandit could refuse, retrieve her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a kingly sum. The chance to have one last adventure with her crew, do right by an old friend and win a fortune that will secure her family's future forever, it seems like such an obvious choice that it must be God's will. Yet, the deeper Amina dives, the more it becomes alarmingly clear there's more to this job and the girl's disappearance than she, that she was led to believe. For there's always a risk in wanting to become a legend, one less chance at glory to savor just a bit more power, and the price might be your soul. Woo! Woo! All right, all right, this seems very good. <laughs> this seems very good. I hope it's a chunky novel. The Adventures of... Please be a chunky novel, please be a chunky novel. Oh, the cover is stunning. Well, it's 500 pages. Anyway, so this seems like very cool. The only thing that scares me is that it's yet again another trilogy and I have a lot of unfinished series and I have a lot of series here in my to be read card that I have not even started. So I'm very scared about starting so many uh, series, but you know, this one seems very cool. It seems like it's written by an author that's very well known for her fantasies. And it's about a topic that I want to explore, so, you know. All right, the next one is a bit of my wild card for the year. Uh, it's called The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores. And it's a fantasy YA uh, book. Um, and I was very high because The Witch and the Vampire, the cover is beautiful. But then I realized that it's a retelling of Rapunzel. And retellings and me did not have a very good, healthy relationship in 2022. So I'm a bit skeptical about it. But then I started reading a bit the story and I was like, okay, this might be good. So it's either going to be a book that I hate or that I love. So Ava and Kay used to be best friends until one, two, one night two years ago, vampires broke through the magical barrier protecting their town 
and in the ensuing attack, Kay's mother was killed and Ava was turned into a vampire. Since then, Ava has been trapped in her house. Her mother Eugenia needs her. Ava still has her witch powers and Eugenia must take them in order to hide that she's a vampire as well. Desperate to escape her confinement and stop her mother's plan to destroy the town, Ava must break out, flee to the forest and seek help from the vampires who live there. When there is another attack, she sees her opportunity and escapes. Kay, now at the end of her at the end of her training as a flame witch, is ready to fulfill, fulfill her duty of killing any vampires that threaten the town, including her friend Ava. On the night that Ava escapes, Kay follows her and convinces her to travel together into the forest while secretly planning to turn her in. Ava agrees, hoping to rekindle their old friendship and the romantic feeling she started to have for Kay before that terrible night. But with monstrous trees that devour humans whole, vampires who attack from above and Ava's stepfather tracking her, the woods are full of danger. As they travel deeper into the forest, Kay questions everything she thought she knew. The two are each other's greatest threat and also their only hope if they want to make it through the forest unscathed. Very, very interesting. I feel like it's going to be some... If the LGBT content is good, if the romance is good, I might forget that this is Rapunzel. So yeah, we'll see. Next one in the list, we have the last one of March and it is a book that I'm very excited because I discovered this author in 2022. And so I want to check what she does in 2023. And apparently she's a very good horror author, so I'm going to check her other books. So it's A House with Good Bones by T. King Fisher. It's released at end of March. And so basically it's a story about like a daughter who visits her mom and she's like so cool like it's gonna be it's been a while we haven't seen each other we're gonna be able to do the things we used to do as when i was a kid like watch tv shows uh eat food blah 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 blah, blah all of these things and then as she arrives in the house the house is like you know complete opposite of what she remembers there's no warmth her mother is cold she's distant she's weird uh she painted the walls white which like is super like the opposite of what they were before because they were like orange or something like this and then like one day she goes to the garden and she sees like a jar of like teeth under the rose bushes and she's like <laughs> weird and then she looks up and there's like vultures like circling the house and she's like this is very weird and so she decides like to take matters into her own hands and she decides to figure out what's going on and apparently it's, it gives really spooky vibes and I love it I love it I'm so freaking excited mm, the cover is ugly though I'm sad about that all right, so that's the last one for March, and we're entering May, April. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know my months. Uh, April, there's only three books. Uh, the first one, it's called The Insatiable Bold Sisters, that really feels like... What was the movie with, like, Lindsay Lohan's, like... Uh, tu a Paris, y yo a California, or something like this, it's called in, in Spanish. Lindsay Lohan... Uh, twin movie, what is it called in English? The Parent Trap. Okay, it has a very different name than in Spanish. In Spanish, it's like, you go to California and I go to, uh, wait. You go to London and I go to California. That's the name in Spanish, in Spanish, which is much more telling than The Parent Trap. Anyway, it reminded me of a bit of that because it's like two twin sisters that get separated when they were kids. Uh, but they had like a very close relationship. And then one day, 10 years later, one of the twin sisters calls the other like, hey, dad has died. Can you come home for the funeral? And so the sister goes back and she realizes that she has no memories of the place she grew up in. And as she starts to think about it, she's like, yeah, but I, oh, it's so weird. Why don't I remember anything? And she feels like this dread coming from like the pond behind the house. And it feels really weird. It's like the ring mixed with the parent trap. That's what I'm getting from this movie, uh, from this book. And I think the cover was stunning. Yeah, the cover was so beautiful. So beautiful. I don't know what about it, but it really speaks to me. And apparently Paul Tremblay loved the book so sign me up sign me up sign me up sign me up so that comes early april then we have the haunting of alejandra by b castro which comes out mid-april and this is a book about a woman who's haunted by la llorona which is a, a mexican uh folk demon is a ghost of a crying woman uh and it's like the story about a woman who sets like she's a vengeful ghost and she's mourning her children who drowned and she drowned them herself so you know it's like it's 
very good, very good. It has appeared in many movies, uh, many, uh, many books already. Like really, like this is like a f story that has been featured in like a lot of places. I think even in a supernatural episode, it was featured. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> I'm checking the Wikipedia page. Uh, La Llorona is an antagonist in the TV series Supernatural, portrayed by Sara Sahi in the pilot episode and by Shane uh, Tomasevich in the Moriah in season 15. So, uh, it's also apparently a thing on Riverdale. What is this TV show become? Anyway, this has been featured many, many times. Uh, and yeah, so, you know, it's a well-known folk story. And so it's a book about this girl. She is very like she's a mother she's a daughter she's a wife and she's also very troubled like she's starting to see this ghost of a woman and so she decides to go to therapy and as she goes to therapy she begins to explore the childhood like her trauma and all of this and she realizes that the woman that she's seeing has been with them and her mother and her grandma all along and she's like no way i'm letting this woman destroy my family like badass and she's like i'm gonna fight against her so it's pretty cool honestly pretty cool and again, I don't know what's up with covers in 2023, but oh, this cover, like this cover, honestly, so beautiful. Again, we see a theme of women and flower, like people and flowers on the on the cover. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the only disappointing thing to me is that this paperback, I think if I remember well, it comes out end of year, not at all in um in April, so I'm probably gonna have to wait and get it for Christ like get it at the end of the year. So, you know, it happens. Sometimes it happens. And then the last one for April we have In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Kroon uh, comes out uh, April 25th. It's a fantasy LGBT and I'm gonna read you the description because it was very short and very cute. In a strange little home built into the branches of a grove of trees, Leave three robots, fatherly inventor android Giovanni Lawson, a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine and a small vacuum desperate for love and attention. Victor Lawson, a human, leaves there too, their family hidden and safe. One day, Vic salvages and repairs an unfamiliar android labeled HAP, or H-A-P, I don't know. He learns of a shared dark past between HAP and Geo, a past spent hunting humans. When Hap unwittingly alerts robots from Gio's former life to their whereabouts, the family is no longer hidden and no longer safe. Gio is captured and taken back to his old laboratory in the city of Electric Dreams, so together, the rest of Vic's assembled family must journey across an unforgiving and otherworldly country to rescue Gio from decommission or worse, reprogramming. Along the way to save Gio amid conflicted feelings of betrayal and affection for Hap. Uh, Vic must decide for himself, can he accept love with strings attached? So this feels like a classic TJ Klune story. It reminds me a bit of the book that I read by him this year that I loved. And I'm excited about it. And a uh, good, good fantasy, comforting fantasy. All right, we're moving into May. Three books, uh, Dragonfall by Laura Lamb. Probably you've seen this one already because it's been on everyone's most anticipated releases. It's a fantasy LGBT about surprisingly dragons long ago humans betrayed dragons stealing their magic and banishing them to a dying world centuries later their descendants worship dragons as gods but the gods they remember uh, but the gods remember and they do not forgive thief arcady scrapes a living on the streets of vetra desperate arcady steals a powerful artifact from the bones of Playbringer, the most hated person in lumet history only arcady knows the artifact's magics Magic holds the key to a new life among the nobles at court and a change for revenge. The spell connects to Everin, the last male dragon foretold to save his kind, dragging him through the veil. Disguised as a human, disguised as a human, Everin soon learns that to regain his true power and form and fulfill his destiny, he only needs to convince one little thief to trust him enough to bond completely, body, mind and soul, and then kill them. Yet, the closer the two become, the greater the risk both their walls will shatter. So this feels like a classic enemies to lover story mixed with like dragons, magic, badass characters and a stunning cover. It is definitely not a standalone, it is a trilogy, so awesome, but uh, 
it really feels cool, so I'm, I'm not even gonna bother. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna accept the fact that I, I have an issue, and that issue is called I cannot not start books and series, so I will just, you know, go on with my life being the way it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the cover is stunning, and I'm very excited about the story, so yeah, into it. The next one is Graveyard of Lost Children by Katrina Monroe. It's a horror book. Um, and this one, it, this one is kind of like a mother by Zoja stage. It's another book about mothers and like getting pregnant and all of this. So I'm very excited about it. At four months old, Olivia Dahl was almost murdered. Driven by haunting visions, her mother became obsessed with the idea that Olivia was a changeling and that the only way to get her real baby back was to make a trade with the dead women living at the bottom of the well. Now Olivia is ready to give birth to a daughter of her own and for the first time she hears the women whispering. Everyone tells Olivia she should be happy, she should be glowing, but the birth of her daughter only fills Olivia with dread. As Olivia's body starts giving out, slowly deteriorating as the baby eats and eats and eats and eats, she begins to fear that the baby isn't her daughter at all and that despite her best efforts, history is repeating itself. Soon, images of a black-haired woman plague Olivia's nightmares, drawing her back to the well that almost claimed her life, tying mother and daughter together in a desperate cycle of fear and violence that must be broken if Olivia has any hope of saving her child or herself. Now we can just say it. This book is amazing and just by the description I'm like in love and yeah like <laughs> so good so good. Now the guest is the third book that I want to read one of the many books that I want to read uh, it's a thriller it's by Emma Klein and I really really uh, well it has a very short description so I'm interested in, like what's gonna be this book I feel like I don't know, I'm, I'm skeptical, but I'm curious. One misstep at the dinner party and the older man and the older man she's been staying with dismisses her with a ride to the train station and a ticket back to the city. With few resources but a gift for navigating the desires of others, Alex stays on the island. She drifts like a ghost through the gated driveways and sun-blasted dunes of a rarefied world, trailing destruction in her wake. Thought, sensual and impossible to look away from, the guest captures the latent heat and potential danger of a summer that could go either way for a young woman teetering on the edge. On the edge. So, does this description tell me like, whoa, yes, does it excite me like the other books I've, uh, I've talked about in this video? No, it doesn't. But, I, let me tell you, there is one thing that calls to me and it's that cover and it's the fact that the description is vague enough to make me curious and to be like is this book going to be a weird vibes nothing happens but then something happens type of book and if i'm right and my gut is telling me that's what it is uh this is going to be a fan favorite of mine so I'm excited. The cover, it's just so beautiful. It's like a weird thriller, but it seems like a book that I'm gonna like. So I'm I'm all I'm open, like I have an open mind when it comes to this book. Alright, now we jump into the last uh, category, which is summer. I didn't put June, July, or August because there's three books. And right now there's not a lot of books about, you know, there's not a lot of releases announced for summer of 2023 yet. Uh so you know, I'll do another video midway through the year to update for the remaining of the year. But I still wanted to talk about three books. Uh, the first one is The Invocation by Crystal Sutherland. Uh, Crystal Sutherland, she's the author of House of Hollow. As I previously said in this video, I love books with people like faces and flowers and House of Hollow is one of those. And I absolutely adore House of Hollow, like it was an instant 5 out of 5 for me. So I'm really happy that there's another book coming out. And Oh, I'm just gonna read it because when I read it, I was like so excited. Zara Jones believes in magic because the alternative is too painful to bear. That her sister was murdered by a serial killer and there is precisely, precisely nothing she can do to change it. 
If there's anything Zara cannot stand, it's feeling powerless. So she decides she will do whatever it takes, even if that means partaking in the occult, to bring her sister back from the dead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Jude Wolf might be the daughter of a billionaire, but she is also undeniably cursed. After a deal with a demon went horribly wrong, her soul is now slowly turning necrotic. Flowers and insects die in her wake, and monstrous things come to taunt her at night. If Jude can find the right to, uh, if Jude can find the right someone to fix her mistake, she fears she'll die very soon. Enter Emma Brine, the solution to both Zara and Jude's predicament, the daughter of a witch. Emma spell, sells spells to women in desperate situations, willing to sacrifice a part of their soul in exchange for a bit of power, a bit of magic to change their lives. But Emma has a dark past all her own, and as her former clients are murdered one by one, she knows it's followed her all the way to London. <sighs> As Zara, and Jude enter er As Zara and Jude enter Emmer's orbit, they'll have to team up to stop the killer before, the they, egg before they each end up next on his list. Okay, I'm gonna pre-order this book right away. I forgot, I read this because this book has been on my TBR for a long time. And I just, oh, I, I honestly, this description, the invocations by... Crystal Sutherland and the cover is also so beautiful I forgot about the cover too I don't think it's uh, yet ready to be pre-ordered but at the moment it, it will be I will get it because this seems very cool anyway this seems very cool I'm super excited it's gonna make my summer and it comes out end of uh, June basically next one is The Fade Away by Alex Armoredes it's a white horror and uh, this one feels like a, it's like the other one I talked about. Uh, she's haunting, and uh, what was the other? The haunting of Alejandra as well. Like these all feel like very comforting and fast read uh, horror books. So I'm really into them. And it's basically a story about um, two like there's two characters, Arwen and Emma, and basically her classmate. Their classmates disappear, but no one remembers it but them. So they're like, what's going on? And everyone is like, who are they talking about? Like, no one is missing. Like, they never existed, these people. Like, stop, like, talking about these people. And so they're like, okay, well, something's weird is going on. And they're going to investigate it. And I'm very excited because I love investigative uh, YA uh, books. So very excited about it. Also, it comes, before my, it comes out before my, my birthday. And, you know, wink, wink to people that give me gifts. <laughs> That is a good gift that you can give me. They fade away. So then the next one is actually the only romance book in the list. And I'm only talking about it because it has vampires in it. So for me, it's like horror, like romancy, fantasy, horror. Uh, true love is at stake in this charming debut romantic comedy. Cassie Greenberg loves being an artist, but it's a tough way to make a living. On the brink of eviction, she's desperate when she finds a too-good-to-be-true apartment in the beautiful Chicago neighborhood. Cassie knows there has to be a catch. Only someone with a secret to hide would rent out a room for that price. Of course, her new roommate, Frederick G. with Fitzwilliam, what is his name, is far from normal. He sleeps all day, is out at night on business, and talks like he walked out of a Regency romance novel. He also leaves Cassie heart-melting notes around the apartment, cares about her art, and asks about her day. And he doesn't look half bad shirtless. On the rare occasions, they're both home and awake. But when Cassie finds bags of blood in the fridge that definitely were in there earlier, Frederick has to come clean. Cassie's sexy new roommate is a vampire, and he has a proposition for her. I knew I had to finish this book on a romantic note. Uh, because yes, horror is nice, thriller books are nice, but every now and then, a cheesy romance book is good for the soul and this when I saw the synopsis like the plot of this book I was like this is gonna be a five out of five for me I am gonna eat this book up it's gonna be so great and it's gonna be so freaky it's it comes out in summer too which is like perfect for a beach read <gasps> so good so so good anyway that's all of the books which makes a lot. I'm not, I haven't counted them, but that's probably like a, more than 20 books that I talked about. 
Uh, I know it's mostly horror, uh, but it is what it is. If you're in my channel, you know what you're gonna get. Um, but uh, every now and then there's horror, like there's some romance, and there's some fantasy, and there's some thriller. Uh, anyway, uh, these are some of the books. Don't forget to check out the full list, my Goodreads uh, anticipated releases of 2023, with all of the other books that I haven't mentioned. And uh, probably we'll do an update in like four or five months with the other months of the year. That's it. That's all for today. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to comment. And I'll see you guys next time for more content. Have a nice day. Bye.